works because uh oh we are live welcome to sidetrack your sci-fi tv and movie channel we have jumped literally from one stream with harris to this <laughs> so i've just told them all stay with harris for a little while and you can come and watch us later um and i don't even know if it's going to work and we're going to go live so we'll find out in a second let me just have a quick look sir. um but anyway how are you sir Hello, sir. I wanted to keep quiet until you gave the intro because uh, I do that with my podcast uh, co-host. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm very, very well. Let's just see if we're live on both. It looks like we're live. Okay, cool. that's good. Right. No so, pressure. And we've got a few people watching, so excellent. Yo, yes, we are talking Star Trek because, I mean, there's been a little bit of uh, controversy. I mean, God forbid, sci uh, you know, new Star Trek would be controversial, but it has been. So let's just, we'll run the intro and then we'll get into it. Davy B is with us. Thank you, sir. You crossed over from the dark side. So, Hi, David B. yeah, we've literally been talking on the channel and just jumped over here. So I grabbed myself a fresh drink and we're on it. Good, so I'm good. streaming for like three hours tonight. You just love it. You just can't keep off the internet, can you? You just can't. Oh, man. It's like an addiction, isn't it? In the end, you can't sort of like sort of. Stop yeah, yeah. I have, to, I have my, my nightly shoot up. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Anyway, so Star Trek. Who started yes. watching Lower Decks again? Uh, I've still not seen all of it yet. I've not seen it. Or I'm I'm going through season three. I know that they've released a. a um, uh, trailer for season four, and I've I've never been the biggest animated fan. I think they're good, no, no. but it's not quite my thing. But obviously, we've had the ultimate crossover recently, so we'll talk about that. Well, yeah, um, I mean, that episode was just phenomenal. Um, I've sort of realised, though, you've got to watch the end of Lower Decks because they start talking about Section 31 at the end. Towards the end of the so I'm wondering, bum, 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 mm -hmm. is Lower Decks Season 4 going to set up the Section 31 movie? Because that's how the season ended. Oh! Would it be quite a different dynamic, though? I mean, I would have thought Lower Decks and Section Thirty One movie would be very different in in its uh, approach yeah. to this all that subject. Well, at the end of the episode, if I remember right, Boingler accidentally joins like, Section Thirty One. I think that's right. I, I watched it a while ago now, but the the last episode is very much about excuse me about Section oh, excuse me about Section Thirty One um and then poking But obviously, they do it in their style, joking about it and being silly with it. Even though the last couple of episodes were quite you know more serious than thing but i just think the way they're doing it with star trek at the moment and we'll talk about this is with all the different shows existing within universe as well which is confusing to say the least sure yeah um, that was the best lodex episode ever um i think it was the best strange news was it, i think it might be my favorite star trek episode except maybe the last couple of episodes of picard season three I think that, okay. that crossover wow, episode that's, is that's a high praise. Um, it's it was a brilliant episode. I've watched it. I've watched it twice. Um, so, but I think it's a perfect opportunity to do something that gives us. I mean, it wouldn't even surprise me if Michelle Yeoh makes a surprise um, appearance in Lower Decks next season. It wouldn't shock me. We um, don't know where she went in Discovery. She went back in time somewhere. So through the Guardian Forever of all things. So yeah. it's possible. Yeah, it's possible. And to be honest, it might be a way. I've always said that they've got to set that up somehow because they're now it's a movie. That their intention was to do well. First of all, the intention was to do a series, and then Michelle went, "I'm quite busy, so how about a mini series?" Said, okay, we're going to do a mini series. Then she won the Oscar, and they went TV movie. movie. <laughs> and so now they've got from ten hours down to two hours. They've got That's so they've got to figure out a way to set that up. And I've been arguing this. I've, I've said about this when I talked about it when it's released. I'm like, that's going to be difficult mm. unless you bring the character into lower decks. And you because it's just uh, using her voice, you mean? Just use her voice. That's that's like two days' work. She could phone it in. Um, that's, oh, clever. that's clever. Yeah, yeah. I did wonder, exactly. and and then that might explain a lot of the lower decks stuff that we saw. But that was just a thought I had today. I just suddenly, like I say, remembered the end of lower decks. And then season four is coming. I'm like, ah, that could be. And, and that's the sort of thing they, they seem to be really liking to do because, I mean, they're really crossing over all of these things. And I'd say, you've seen the you've seen the crossover episode. I have. 
what did you actually think when you heard they were going to do that? What was your initial thing? Uh, for my uh, uh, opinion, uh, obviously, Star Trek Discovery, sorry, Star Trek Strange New Worlds and Lower Decks are quite different from one another. Um, now, I know we're going to be talking about the dynamic of um, uh, Strange New Worlds Season 2 has had a lot mm. of light comedy episodes, which I know that mm. you've already talked about in previous um, streams or whatever about is this the right Mold direction? About, I think we can say. Yeah, 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 no. yeah, yeah. And no. so it, it's possible, talking about it actually live, thinking about it, it may be that they partly made some of the episodes lighter so there'd be more of a continuity between Lower Decks and Strange New Worlds. I don't know why I'm suddenly thinking about that, but it, 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 otherwise, wouldn't it be more jarring to try to slot them together in the way that they did it? It, it did, no, it did work for me. Yeah. And I know mm -hmm. a lot of people are quite, um, are like Trek cars, they're quite big uh, fans of it. Um, mm -hmm. well, they they said others... the Star Trek, new Star Trek episode, hands down for them. Yeah, so... yeah. It's, it's not all that, it's not the whole case. A lot of people are saying, well, look, this is not quite what we want. We want a proper sci-fi drama with thought compelling mm. stories now as a stargate fan stargate sg1 as I mean, i'm a huge fan as you are it did connect the comedy with the sci-fi stories the yeah. best way ever yeah there was uh, a good balance between the two it, it was such a wonderful mm. i don't know whether it quite works with all the history of star trek in the same mm. way you know, so I yeah. don't know whether. How do you feel about that? I, I'm with you on that. I think the, the yeah, you, you need a balance. I've always argued, real life has humour in it, right? It says, and and when things get very dramatic, that's when somebody will make a take the piss comment because it's our way of um, coping and and you know relieving yeah. stress and things. And that was always like Jack O'Neill to me. Jack O'Neill was like people I've worked in the NHS and other jobs I've had that are very stressful. There's always that one joker and yes. he holds I've had the same. Out. I've had exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um so I think that's real life. That's why it felt real because his his humor was real. It wasn't slapstick. It wasn't ridiculous. It was a you know in wait a ball is waiting for him and he comes up and he goes I'm sorry I'm having a lovely brunch. That is the sort of thing somebody might actually say in that situation when they're looking, you know, when they're looking down on somebody and actually, they want to condescend somebody, mm -hmm. you know, it's um, so that's why I thought it's realistic and it's balanced. I don't think Strange New Worlds is and that's my point, but I love it, don't get me wrong, I, I absolutely mm -hmm. adore it. Um, but I think sometimes the humour is a bit heavy, and when you've got the captain who would be a respectful figure and he's there doing silly pirate impressions, even though it was very funny, I'm there thinking, yeah, that's not that wouldn't happen in real life. They made a point of it, didn't they, in the crossover episode? A funny captain, what's going on? <laughs> sort of thing. And I'm like, well, yeah, because he's a respectful character and people are supposed to look up to him. And you kind of want to know your captain is is on the ball. I'm thinking about um, how obviously Captain Picard in the next generation was a very, very serious captain. And there was an episode in season four of The Next Generation where Brian meets his old captain, Captain Maxwell. Mm. And he was saying how his old captain was much more jovial, much more easygoing. And it, 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 so in some ways it does show that it's not just the Star Trek series. Each captain mm. has its own way, his own or her mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. of dealing with her or his crew. Mm -hmm. But on saying that, I think that the informality of the, the bridge crew in Strange New Worlds is not the norm for a general Starfleet ship in all the shows we've seen in the past. There's a way of acting in, in a way where you can have some banter, you can have some humour, but it's not to the level of, as you say, the pipe going, ha-ha, Jim Lad, and stuff like that. It's mm -hmm. It doesn't quite gel with the... 50, 60 year history of hmm. some of the Star Trek series. So maybe that's what you're picking up on. Yeah. And do you think Strange New Worlds, for me, I think Strange New Worlds is is Roddenberry Star Trek. And I think that's what they've very much got in mind. A lot of the storylines feels like a Roddenberry storyline. It feels like the first series of um, TNG. It feels like the original series. Um, you could argue they're remaking a lot of the original series episodes or, or very inspired by a few. Mm -hmm. Um and I'm not 100% convinced that's going to work over a six or seven season 
run. One of the things, though, that I would be, I would love to know your opinion on, um, and it's something I've argued in my other video, was basically that this, the musical is one too many quirky episodes. I, what I want now is I want three episodes that of drama. Of, of, of the, the, the thing. I, I, again, don't get me wrong. I don't want discovery that's all drama and all action and all running around and pew, pew, I don't want that either. I think the first season of Strange New Worlds had a really good balance. I think I this season they've gone a bit silly. And well, one rumor I keep hearing is that Strange New Worlds is at risk of actual cancellation. And then I see them do something like I don't believe it. I don't I don't believe it. I think they're definitely getting a third season. They've already done all the pre-production, they're already doing a lot of the work for it. So I don't believe it, but I keep hearing the same rumor. Um, from a couple of different sources. Um right. actually because of the strikes, it might not come back. Um, I'm certain it will. Um, I'm 95% certain it's coming back. But they throw in episodes like the musical, and that to me feels like an episode that you would put towards the end of a season run. You don't put it in season two. What do you think? Mm -hmm. um, I, I think, first of all, one of the aspects which is a problem is that the actual each season is so short. Uh, at yep. the moment, we're having only 10 episodes per season, where, of course, in the heyday of the Rick Berman era, we were getting 26 episodes per year. That's a lot of episodes. Um, and um, all the previous Star Trek series had some really duff episodes. It's not against the, the Star Trek franchise. Sometimes they have an idea, it just doesn't work Every out. Series. Every series. Yeah. And you're doing exactly. 26 episodes working 16 hours a day. Some of them are not yeah. going to So solid, so solid. To do, um, obviously, they've done this crossover episode, which I liked. Uh, they mm. did another relatively light-hearted episode as well. This is, but the musical aspect is a bit of a jump. I mean, it's never been done before. Um, apparently, Buffy did an episode where it was a comic, uh, a musical. Yeah, episode. I mean, it has been done in season series. I've never before. seen it in another format um, in another series. I have to say, no, this I've not seen it in sci-fi. No, um, but I've seen it in actually. I know I have seen it in sci-fi. I think either Andromeda or. Um, the other one that I was a bit like that. Andromeda that's now has gone out of my head. That one. Ben Brown, I think they did one. Um, obviously, the, the like I said, the Buffy did one, but that was a demon that caused like a spell for them to all for that to happen. Yeah, uh, this could be a spatial yeah. anomaly, couldn't it? It's something like yeah. something hits them and they, they start singing as to, to communicate. They could do it in a way in sci fi, but I don't know that they all know the words and they all know the dance. <laughs> <you. laughs> I'm not sure that's going to work in a series, but it has been done in other series. I think Buffy was probably one of the first ones to do it. Uh, but Star Trek, the original series, used to have music in it. You know, they would have it. But to be honest... Um, Ahura, Ahura was singing to Charlie, like, Charlie, you're my darling. There's an episode where no. she was singing to Charlie Evans, no. who, of course, had the power. Um, uh, she sang a song to Spock. She sang in Star Trek V as well. They had like a band at one point doing this like nineteen space hippies, like, space hippies, space hippies yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, um, the most, yeah come in. Yeah. Way to eat Way to eat them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I mean, it's it's painful. Those aren't the episodes people remember. When you go, oh, what was your favorite? You know, the original series episode. Nobody goes, oh, that one with the space hippies, or that one with the who. <laughs> Um, they all go black and white face guy or the Tholian web or something like that, don't they? They, they, they yeah, talk about that. Doomsday machine for me, yeah. yeah, yeah Doomsday exactly. machine. Doomsday is a perfect example. Um, when you look back on this season, I cannot believe, I think people will say, what were your favourite episodes? What are the ones you remember? And people will obviously look at the crossover because it was such a stupid idea that they did so brilliantly well. They really pulled it off. I said when it came out, it's either going to be brilliant or crap. There's no in between. It, it, it was, it will good. Not it was be good. It was okay. really good. I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, it can't just be okay because it's such a mad idea. If they don't get it bang on, it's going to be silly. Yeah. And they've got it bang on. Um, so, um, but nobody's going to look back and go, well, the musical was marvelous. I, I can't see anybody doing that in years to come. I mean, like in 10 years' time, when you go, Strange New World Series 2, what did you think? Well, the if musical. They, if, no, they're not going to do that. If they do a musical episode, the one song they've got to sing is Star Trek in Across the Universe. I'd yeah, if they don't, that. it's just a crime. And I'm I would love it. that. I'm sorry. It is the Oscar yeah. musical form of Star Trek, which I remember hearing mm. at school in 1987. And even my mates who hated Star Trek, and it was a real stigma of being a Star Trek fan back then. Yeah. I was really, I was, I was always a closet Trekkie back at school. And even yeah, they yeah. were singing Star Trek in Across the Universe. 
um, by the what firm. What was going on with Kazuka Fender first? Yeah, yeah, it was brilliant. I loved right. it. So stop it, bow, stop it, bow, stop it, bow. I, 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 I literally listened to it a couple of days ago. <laughs> when the music thing came out, I thought I'm just googling Star Trek, um, and I listened yeah. to the whole thing, and I'm like, oh, I love it. Brilliant. Couple of days. Brilliant. Um, it's gonna ha like, like Andrew here, so maybe it's aliens, and that's how they communicate through song and dance. I think I think they've kind of hinted that that is what it's going to be. I think I've seen the trailer of it, and they and like an energy wave hits, so they go like that. Yeah. But they, as you say, they've got to learn the lyrics, stuff, haven't they? How can they sing? Yeah, but Uhura says something about this alien species they celebrate with song. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's like a telepathic thing and it is a communication. I think that's that's what it's gonna be, which is kind of sci-fi. They, they might just get away with it. They did an episode of Voyager with a doctor. Um he yeah. sings and then they invent a better doctor than him, and it was a way it was so unfamiliar with music. Mm -hmm. that they used in a way it's not exactly the same as this format but as as you've already said music has yeah. been used in concepts in star trek before but yeah. not a full-out musical that was one of those things though and what they've done in previous uh, series is when you get into a bit later down the line seasons four five whatever and you've got an actor like brent spiner who actually came from a um variety sort of background he was a singer a dancer and all these things and you yeah. have actors like, you know, um, uh, oh, and name's going out of my head. Oh, God, Ohura, Michelle. Michelle Nichols. Oh, Michelle Nichols. And you've got somebody like that who has got such a talent. You will have an episode and go, you know, we want to show a bit more of the actor. We want to show yes. a bit more of the actor. Yes. It's just weird they're doing it in the second season. It's just weird they're doing it so early for me. Does but that Uhura, indicate, does the that woman indicate that perhaps that they don't, then as you've already said, they might, might not be confident that it will have a very long season or series if it's only going to be like three seasons of 30 episodes. Maybe that's why they're cramming it in now. Yeah, I just wish they'd done it as like a Christmas special or something. You know what I mean? It's just like, done it as, or did it as a surprise 11th episode. I'd love that to see wouldn't that. have bothered me in the slightest. No. Um, I'd have gone, you know, a standalone episode, you know? Um, yeah. But the way they've done it, I'm just I feel a bit robbed. And I just I just I just can't help it. I feel like no, I was looking forward now to the last three episodes and it's gonna be um whatever this thing is they mentioned the first episode, this big threat that's come in, it's gonna explain it, and it's all gonna, you know, maybe a three episode run into the big finale. Mm. And now it's sort of like we're not getting that. We're getting the Klingon episode, we're getting a musical, and then we're getting the finale. And I've no idea what the finale is gonna entail at all. I mean you know, I, I know I do like respect that they've actually tried to make the episodes relatively standalone. Apart from this, Spock is now suddenly very, very human and laughing. And I never thought I'd see that arc to his character in even in, yeah. in a prequel kind of thing. Um, but as you say, normally you'd think there'd be a build up towards some issue, some conundrum, some baddie of some sort of, mm. you know, as you say, we've got, we've got the two episodes we know about which are coming along. Unless the Klingon one leads to something at the end, maybe that's a loose link and they've just got the musical okay. one in between. I don't know. I'm not I don't know why they've done it. Um, as, as I say, for me, if you like musicals, you're going to look forward to it. I, I don't if like you don't like musicals, musicals really. like me, I'm not interested. No, I'm not um, interested. It's, it's a waste and, it's a, and, and I feel robbed. But... Mm -hmm. but God forbid that New Trek should be anything but pigging um, divisive again. I mean, it's with all the quite negative press that, you know, um, Secret Hideout and stuff have had in the last decade. Oh, no, it's not quite a decade. Is it like six or seven years since they've had Star Trek? Yeah. I do have to wonder who the executives are in charge. When somebody went, let's do a musical episode, and it's going to be episode nine of the season, and we're not going to announce it till then. I, I have to wonder, where was the person in the corner going, is that going to annoy as many people as it is excites? You know, we're already quite divisive. Is this going to piss off a few people? And Alex Kirsten there go, no, it'll be fine. And then, you know, where was the person with the common sense saying, we're already quite divisive? Hmm. It's just going to make it even worse. It's going to make it kind of yeah. spiral it down even more. But then yeah. maybe they're thinking that, that that's what they're expecting anyway, because whatever they make... They're going to have somebody who's going to be hating. This is this is shite. This is rubbish. So you know they might sort of like think, well, look, it's going to happen anyway. Whatever we do, so let's just do it. Yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking as well that there's a, there's a lot of people that aren't going to watch this episode, and they've just started to get the numbers up. 
the numbers have not been great for Strange New Worlds, but they was they were building. It was a bit like Picard. The first three or four episodes, mm-hmm. the numbers weren't great. And about episode five, it found its audience and it really kicked off. Yes. And yes. Strange New Worlds seems to have been doing the same. The first few episodes weren't great, but about episode five, people. And I think that's because partly I think people binge it. They don't watch it straight away, and they they then they'll binge it around episode four or five sort of thing. Yeah. Um, or when somebody goes, oh, this brilliant episode, and you know, the, the word of mouth is, is a thing as well. But um, so I'm sort of like, you were just getting going and you've turned off half your audience with announcing this. And and I, like I say, I've got nothing against it. I'm not, I'm not, a lot of people are angry about it. A lot of people are like, what the F are they doing? Really? Um, are they really? Are they that bothered about it? Oh man, you should see some of the comments I've had. I've not looked at all the stuff. I mean, I know that obviously Discovery was very, very serious, and that really pissed off a lot of people as well. And of course, Strange New Worlds, yeah, but it's like extremes, isn't it, on both sides? I mean, characters you actually like, and for a character to actually like, you've got there's got to, I think you've got to inject a little bit of humor, and that's the that was possibly one of the reasons why in Discovery, the characters are so forgettable. Yeah, because uh, for me anyway, that's my problem with Discovery. I think it's beautifully made. It's one of the best looking shows on telly. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not badly written. I quite I like, like Saru story. though. I think Saru's a good character. He's a like character Saru. I do like. Other than that, he's the only oh. one I like. He's the only one I really care about. Couldn't care less about Tilly? Any other was it Tilly? But she's gone. She's Tilly. She's she teacher. yeah. She went to academy or something, didn't she? Yeah. She's going to be going to academy. With, that's a rumor anyway that she'll be one of the teachers. But people liked it. But Tilly was because she was a bit. She was sweet and she was. And she yeah. was kind of yeah. funny. Um, but other than that, the the actors. Are, I mean, the the scientist. The 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 is he Albino? The guy. It's, it's an acceptable term. The blonde guy, anyway. Um, which one? I, which, which, which character? The, the chief engineer. Do not care about. Oh, um, if he died, um, or I wouldn't be bothered. Not in real yeah, life. I can't think of his character. Yeah, I, can't of I met the guy actually. Met the actor. He's actually really nice in real life. But I can't yeah, think I'm of his sure character. he's lovely. Paul Stamets. Um, Paul Stamets. Paul Stamets. Oh, there you go. But I mean, it's one of those things that if the character died, I wouldn't care in the slightest. I'd be like, oh, he's dead. Yeah. Oh, well, still a bit. Um, the Tara Green thing escaped and ate him. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and, you know, like Michael's been shot out of an airlock. Yeah. Yeah. No, it wouldn't, wouldn't bother me. If Sheru died, Wait, I'd And if she oh, did, no, if, she got <laughs> shot out of, if, she, if she got shot out of an airlock, she'd be crying when she got shot out because she cried in every episode. Yeah, yeah, which is also, I'm like, I mean, calm down with the crying as well. We don't, I liked her in The Walking. She was in the actress, uh, Shino, Sinura Martin Green. She was in The Walking Dead, and I, I thought yeah. the character and that was fine, but I just don't know why. But it's not worked for her. I, li- I like her as an actress, but I just don't like the character in Discovery very much. Yeah, I just don't, it's because I think the whole show is just all it's had to the joy sucked out of it, and it's just not worked. But, but anyway, Strange New World so far, mm-hmm. right? The mm-hmm. first episode. Where they, I've got uh, my list here. Actually, I'm going to go through the episodes. Have, sure. we, have we talked about any of the episodes since I was last on with you? I don't think we have, have nope. we? No, we haven't. All right. So, so should, uh, should we go through the episodes? Or is that how do you want to do it? Do it. Yeah, do it. All right. So obviously, the first episode was the Broken Circle, which is the one where we had this kind of Klingon kind of aspect, and people wanted to respark the war, which we had from Discovery. Um, yeah. There was a Federation Lovely. ship, which was. Um, Put together yeah. and it was going to be instigating. Now I actually like this episode. No, I, kind I of quite it. like this. You hated it. I know. I thought it was quite good. So um, um, go on. What it was right. So they had a thing in the first season where they had the Enterprise being attacked and it did that spinning maneuver and everybody really loved that shot. And there was torpedoes mm-hmm. going past in it. Ooh, isn't the Enterprise maneuverable now? Um, and massive inside, huge bedrooms. It's lovely. Yeah. Um, for me, but then they do it every time there's a battle now, the Enterprise starts spinning. And yeah, do, I, yeah, I don't like that. Do always, yeah. And I'm watching that going, I've seen this. Um, the storyline didn't make a lot of sense. And I am sorry if you steal a Federation starship, even if it all works out in the end, you are going to get court martialed. Um, but he, they, they just sort of went, nah, you. Yeah, you little thing. Yeah, you little tinker. Well, all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Billy, don't do it again. All right. Naughty. That's okay. It's okay. Well, it didn't. It. So, uh, but also the thing uh, for half the sun that's going. I do not care what's happening here. Uh, oh, they're going to trigger a war, are they? Yeah, well, I didn't think that was going to happen. I mean, it was a bit dubious about that. 
Um, I think it's because I'm a big ship guy. I just like seeing another Federation starship, even though it wasn't. I don't know why. No, I was geeking out with episodes with that. But then, uh, was, well, was... another logical error in that thing, mm -hmm. and we we talk about logical error in the next episode. A starship comes out. The Federation, another Federation ship comes and fires at it, very close to a Klingon warship. That looked amazing, by the way. The Klingon warship, I think it was the D7. Uh, D7. Yeah, oh man, it looks amazing. Mm. And that Klingon warship did not take an opportunity to fire. And I'm like, yeah, they Why? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and then they just go and get pissed. And I'm like, oh, come on. <laughs> come on, please. Somebody they look good. Please. They look good. The makeup was pretty better. good. I like how they've tried to sort of go, right. We had horrible Klingons and we got the real Klingons. So let's try and mix it up a bit and pretend that they're just like northerners. The, the weird plastic Klingons. Lots of planets in the north, like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like Doctor Who or something. Yeah, they're yeah, like, like they're just yeah. from a different part of, of, of the Klingon homeworld. Um, and, and and I'm just like, yeah, okay. We'll, they're, they're trying to fix a few of their mistakes. And and I, I can respect that. They're, they're trying their best. Um, but at least uh, they did it. At least they didn't keep the the ones from Discovery and sort of like because uh, I thought that we'd have the mix like um, you know the Romulans um, in Discovery, uh, not in Discovery in Picard. They mm -hmm. mixed them up from the ones where they had the slight V shaped foreheads from the Next Generation yeah, yeah, yeah. with the planar ones from TOS and they mixed them together. And I think that's where the yeah. Northern thing came from. They tried to so, do those Klingons, but they didn't go full plasticine heads. They just they but they had Klingons that were more like the Discovery season one. And the JJ Abrams Klingers, but they yeah, didn't yeah. Like go that far. And then they changed the ridges on a few of them, so they're a bit more like other ones we've seen. And even going back to some of the ones we've seen in the movies, where it's only a couple of ridges, and you know, oh, like Star Trek um, Six, Star Trek Six yeah. had, a, had a different slightly different, and Star Trek motion picture. Yeah, I didn't mind that. I thought that was quite cool. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's obviously an episode which um, had us issues and stuff. Is that like cube that, next but... to Mike from Terrorhawks? It is. I made it. I three D printed it myself. That is amazing. You can't buy those. That's, it's actually pretty good. Was yeah, astonishing. Yeah, astonishing yeah. TV show. I love it. I love that series. I thought I'd show it off because you can't buy yeah. these. It no. took me a day to 3D print it as well. It's the biggest thing I've ever um, I bet if you made a few, you could sell <laughs> Um But thank you for the contribution, Andrew. Um, what were we saying, sir? <laughs> yeah, so basically, we were just talking about um, the Klingons and the episode yeah. in, in general. Cool. I mean, obviously, it. it I, I quite liked it, but I, I could see why, um, you know, some of the aspects, which you say, it mm. wasn't the most coherent story. It didn't exactly set up the Klingon Federation uh, relationship in a, in a very realistic way. Um, so mm. I could actually appreciate it. Uh, only a couple of years after the Klingon War, by the way. Yes, exactly. That. Yeah. And of course, um, they all look uh, different as well. So, you know. Yeah. Um, so, and I, was, mm, and I, I found so, it boring. The first 20 minutes was just boring. But. And no, Pike. Pike is the captain. Ah. Parental leave and all that, I know. But... I heard that's because the actor, Anson Mount, apparently he's only recently become a, 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 either a, fa a father again or um, that he's got family commitments. So apparently he's not been involved so much with season two because of home commitments. Definitely in the first two episodes, he was barely in it. Um, he's in it's come through more. Terror Hawks was a great show. I love Terror Hawks. Um, I loved all those. I think Terror Hawks was Jerry Anderson, wasn't it? I loved all it those. It was Jerry Anderson. Yes, it was. Um, Terror Hawks, they should bring back Terror Hawks. Um, I'd love to see that. I'd love to see that. Go on. Yeah, CGI one. Um, but, um, but yeah, uh, I just think you push back production. If Anson Mount isn't available, he's the main man, he's the main star, you can go, oh, well, we can let the others shine. No. Is it because they consider it like some of the other sort of uh, Rick Berman era where it's more of an ensemble kind of thing? So yeah. that you can have an episode which focuses on data, an episode on Riker or... You know, you can't maybe that's ten episodes. Yeah, uh, I agree about that. Yeah, when exactly. You've got episodes. Yeah, you can do those episodes. When you've got ten, every episode is like that's what I keep saying. The real eight, the real estate is seriously valuable, and you need to make every penny count. If your main actor wants to have some parental leave, that's great. Mm -hmm. Push production back three months. Mm -hmm. You know, they obviously didn't do that. They obviously didn't well, do that. They knew the baby was coming nine months before because that's how that works. Yes. So, uh, yeah. Um, they could do the math, can't they, with that one? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I wasn't impressed by that. Episode two of this season. I'm also going to. Astra per Aspera. Per Aspera. Well, that's what yeah. I'm going to say. Uh, this was the, the court case one with um, number one. Um, 
And uh, so obviously it was about the anti-genetic modification laws, which of course was linked up to um, DS9 and the others. And um, it was the court case episodes. And I, Now, um, I've seen quite a few court case episodes. I have to say, compared to some of the others, it wasn't high on the list. Um, I thought that um, Measure of Man with, with uh, Data was oh. probably one of the best ones. Brilliant. I also thought the Voyager holographic rights in Season 7, I think it was, was also another good one. Yep. Um, Worf had a court one in DS9. Yep. There's ones in the original series. What do you think of it? I thought it was borderline awful. Yeah, I did um, like this one. It was illogical. Um, it was... Uh, it, it was borderline nonsense, if I'm honest. Um, and they tried to build it up so that there was that big, clever reveal at the end. And I'm like, that, that, I'm that sorry, was, a, that that was just such a cop off. That that that, uh, that way that they did it. Yeah, it's it was like, like oh, like, uh, A plus B equals what? <laughs> I'm like, F. No. <laughs> and then, so so you you didn't ask for asylum. The captain has the right to break the rules. Okay. Um, but you didn't ask, but it, but you said it was implied. And I'm like, uh, that's not how asylum works. You can't that's imply right. it. No, you can't just imply it. You got it or you're not. You know, it's, it's the whole fact. Been, yeah. yeah, years later. And, 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 and I'm just saying, and anyway, if you're given asylum to the Federation, that, that they, they can say, well, okay, you've got asylum. That's brilliant. You're now a member of the Federation and you can go about free. We're still kicking you out of Starfleet, though, because you broke the rules. And we have standing laws that prevent people from a genetically engineered people from a, from being the Star Trek because we had that, you know, Khan conflict. Yeah, thing. The, the eugenics was. But you could argue, what about Bashir? Bashir had the same principle. He was found out in DS9 season five. And in the end, they let him off. And they, his dad went to prison for two years. Yeah, they someone that. still went to prison, what they realised. But they, did, they changed the Federation law. The, the Federation law did change following that episode. Mm. The problem was they couldn't change the law for this episode because it's a, it's a pig in sequel. Yes. A prequel even. And that's, that's why I hate prequels as much as I do, because you know what's going to happen. You know what's in this episode going, well, they're not going to change the laws. They're going to find some loophole. And they found a loophole. But they didn't. That's the problem. No. They didn't find a bloody loophole. They just no, sort of said it. And they just it was sort a cop-off of ending. It was a cop-off. Yeah, it was a cop-off. Well, oh, that's yeah. fine now. No, it isn't. And, and also, um, when we it's reviewed it on my, on my show... 100%. That's why they kind of used that as an excuse, didn't they, saying that the captain is allowed to occasionally break the prime directive and we don't have a go at them. Because, well, actually, Kirk got um, bloody um, demoted and... Oh, that was for stealing the Enterprise. For breaking, yeah, for breaking uh, the rule uh, of the, um, what's it, from the commander, what's it called, the chief, and uh, yeah. displaying a direct order. That's what it was with him. Yeah. Um, I, but, I also, the episode, I also thought that the pacing was a bit too slow. It was quite a long episode, and um, it might have done better if they had some sort of B, B story or something, maybe just to, just to uh, fill it up a bit. I don't know. It, 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 I preferred episode one to episode two. Let's put it that way. Yeah. I hated both. Uh, my problem was I, I didn't like the end of Sis, uh, Strange New World season one. I thought I know you didn't. You hated that episode. Yeah, the the, the um, last few episodes, I hated them. I remember you saying but bringing Kirk back was awful. It was such a bad decision. Now, now, don't get me wrong. I've watched them since. They're not terrible. They're just not as good as the first eight. The first eight episodes were so good that then it tailed off at the end, and I'm like, oh. but um, this one, it's just it started weak, but then. We get to the third episode. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Which featured Kirk again. And I was okay with it. <laughs> All right, so tell me what you liked about it, and then I'll, I'll give you my opinion. Um, I liked... To be honest, I just thought it was a clever story. I thought, again, it was a time travel episode, which was a bit sort of like, somebody appears. We need to go back in time. Whee! And it was just very, like, there was no reason for what happened. But I didn't really care because the story worked. I liked that. And then she walked up and there's Kirk and the mm. things had changed. Again, I again, I don't know why the conflict would that way that would have happened. But it that's what happened. Um, yeah, just, just don't answer it. Just go with it. I actually like Kirk now. I, I, the guy that they've got playing him, I thought that was my main problem in the first series. I thought the guy they got playing him, he's too scrawny. He's got a weird hunch thing going on. And I just didn't like him. But in this series, we got, I think we got to see a bit more of him 
he was a bit more light-hearted. It wasn't as serious as the last two episodes where we saw him. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I actually got by the end of this, I was thinking, I like this guy. I, I think this is good. I still don't think they should have brought Kirk in this early. Again, I think it's another indicator that maybe this series alternate will... timeline. Well, oh, well, there's an alternate timeline which we can talk about in a minute. But I'm wondering whether this season isn't going to go past season three or four, and they don't. They, there's no intention for it to. That's the only reason I can think I'd bring Kirk in this early. Because it's, it's getting hard. closer to when they like, stop it, you mean? Yeah, I just don't see how it's going to work. Um, yeah, so, yeah. um, but I thought this episode was clever. I thought the relationship between her and this... Oh, I'm sorry, I, don't, I can't remember her name, the security officer. Laan. Singh. Is it Singh? Laan. Laan Singh. Um, so, Laan. Um, I just thought it was racist. The only thing irritated me slightly is um, Kirk's now a chess genius. When did that happen? Um, he actually beat Spock in his very first scene in the very first episode of the original series. Oh well, I didn't. Oh, see, I don't remember that. So it, well, it, it was. Uh, it was. It was where no one, where no man goes before. Oh, actually, no. I think Spock beat him. They were playing three D chess in the very first scene, and and um, and Spock was still quite emotional. That I haven't episode. watched the original series for years. Yeah, he was playing so, the very um, first scene. Right, then I don't mind that scene so much because at least it's dragging something back from the original series. Yeah, and you could yeah. say. One D chess or two D chess, whatever you want to call it, compared to three D chess is easy. So at least the only thing was that I I think that he made a lot of money. I mean, people are gambling a lot of money on chess. Um, <laughs> but but that's that's neither in nor there. It was if, that. it's true. Then actually, I find that scene a lot less irritating. Um, if they if that was if that was right that he'd, we'd seen him play chess in the previous thing. So yeah, yeah. Uh, thank yeah. You because it's growing on me. He is growing on me. Uh, he's growing on me too, actually. Paul Wesley, as um, Cypher Quest just said, um, is definitely, I think we, we had to get used to him because he's very different from uh, Chris Pine and William Shatner's versions. Um, and um, it's funny because the actors Ethan Peck and Anson Mount as Pike and Spock have hmm. been easier to get used to, whereas Paul Wesley is a bit different in his version of Kirk. Oh, and I tell you what, though, I saw a side-by-side -side image of um, William Shatner about uh, uh, Paul Wesley's age and Paul Wesley, and th there's a similarity. Is there? They kind of look, you know, a bit alike. Not a lot, but a bit. Yeah, but that's all right. Um, so, at that age sort of thing. When, um, although when... Paul Wesley's older, isn't he? He's in his early 40s. And, of course, um, uh, Kirk in the original series was about 34 when he was Captain. Um, yeah, Wesley. that was what they, they based it on the ages they were supposed to be. So, because yeah, yeah. um, Kirk's character is supposed to be quite a lot younger, isn't he? He's supposed mm -hmm. to be five or six years, so he's supposed to be in his late 20s, yeah. This. Um, whereas obviously, yes, I know the actor's a little bit older, but um, but yeah, he's growing up. Interesting, I'm, interesting. I, yeah, good. I don't hate him as much as I did, put it that way. That's good, okay. So, no. maybe if you watch Paul Wesley in the last episode of season one again in the future. Maybe you'll find it a bit easier to watch the second time round. I, I watched them in the run up to the season coming out, this season coming out, and I, I have to admit that's when I realised I know I didn't I don't hate these episodes as much as I sort of did first time. Around. I don't I use the word hate. I use the word hate in the terms of television, which isn't really, <laughs> you know I know mean? exactly what it's you mean. Like, I yeah. hate the um I don't know, I hate the Russians invading the Ukraine or I hate it if somebody upsets my wife. I hate that. I, I hate <laughs> it's something. Yeah, but, um, yeah. Just the uh, way you term it is the way you term it. Yeah, yeah it's, um, I disliked it, but it, only because it was compared to the other episodes, which was. Um, I just yeah. But what do you think of the episode? I'm generally speaking. I, I think generally it was good. I think that my major issue, or not maybe issue is not the right word, but 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 factor was the discontinuity with the Khan with the eugenics wars and that Khan was of course supposed to be taking over the earth in 1992 which means he would have been mm. born in the 1960s or 70s and at this point we've got another Khan that was born probably in about 2012 or something we see him about mm. 10 years old in the scene um now I understand why they've done it and um you know, because, you know, the real world, we're catching up with uh, hypothetical future ideas for initial series. But um, I, I kind of thought, I don't know, it was coming anyway. We knew that this was going to happen, but I just kind of, you know, I've been watching such it all my life. So it, I kind of always think, well, that was not how they did it back in 1966 when we had a car. You know what I mean? I really nerd out about continuity. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, I have a love hate thing with content. I think sometimes canon and things that you've got to you've got to give the writers the opportunity to change things slightly. And for this case, they kind of had to do it that way because they needed to be slightly in the future because of the bridge thing and the way they were doing it. Mm. Uh, and then it had to be a child because Lahan couldn't kill couldn't kill him basically. Oh, yeah, exactly for the future. Um, so um, so that it had an emotional impact. So I know why they did it. Um, I, that didn't bother me so much as the actual story of the episode. I don't mm. think was the story of, of why she went back in time. I can't even remember it now. I only watched the episode a couple of weeks ago. Uh, yeah. yeah, something happened where oh, we had, you had the temple agents, didn't we? At one point, and yeah, there was temple agents. Happened, yeah, but I can't remember. I can't even remember why um, she ended up going back in time herself. Because the episode was more about the, the relationship between her and Kirk. Which actually worked. Not, the dynamic, the actor, it, did, it did seem to work for me. Yeah, so that's the only thing that would bother me, maybe. The reasoning for actually going back in time was a bit weak. Mm -hmm. Other than that, um, so the actual story was a bit weak, but I think maybe they even did that on purpose a little bit because they were focusing on those other things. Um, you needed time for that relationship thing to build. Cool. And they're going to end up in bed in the musical episode. So, oh, they're not, are they? Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, in the you, do you know what you you are you are like the actual um, in your channel and everything. You are the person to actually say this is going to be shy. But what if it's really good? Are you going to come back and say you know you know I was so so I was so wrong? Mm -hmm. It was the most fantastic episode I've ever seen Star Trek in since I was um, three. I always <laughs> I will always say my opinion. <laughs> Um, Go on. And I'll always be honest. If I if I don't like something, I'll say I don't like it, and I will. And I would. I'll try to explain why. Um, and that's I think something. I think which you've done tonight. People, you've done that today. Yeah. Well, a lot of hate channels don't do that. They just say this. Oh, they come up with some nonsense political reason, and they or they attach stuff to it. I've been wrong a couple of times. I've said I'm not sure. But what I try to do, I, the one thing I won't do, is I will not say the musical is going to be crap because mm -hmm. I've not seen it, so I don't know. You're just viewing um, some doubts, some doubts, initial doubts about how it might actually. I'm saying I think there's a reason I wish it wasn't happening now because I want some sci fi now. We've had a couple of fun episodes. I want some sci fi now. Yeah. So that irritates me. I feel like I'm being robbed a little bit. But that's not the episode's fault. You know what I mean? If this was the 11th episode or a bonus Christmas episode or something, I'd be fine. No problem with it at all. Yeah, I agree. I feel like I'm agree being robbed. Yeah. yeah. But also, I'm not excited about it. I'm not. I'm not angry about it, but I'm not excited about it because I don't like musicals. And to be honest, it doesn't matter if the episode's good. I'm still going to come away going, "Okay, I can watch it. I'll never watch it again," because the I don't. Like what it's musicals. doing? What it's doing? You know, if they did a murder mystery episode, I'd be like all over it. I'm like, I love a good murder mystery. I'd watch. I'd watch the shit out of it. Um, but you know, if they did, if they do a teenage angst relationshipy episode Starfleet I, Academy that's going to be doing that anyway <laughs> I don't want to watch it um, I'll give it a go but I won't be excited yeah, yeah. I'll be like okay well let's see what this is about but oh god but they've been doing that they've been doing like the horror episode like with the Gorn episode last season and they do the one with like the um the episode where there's it's like a submarine yeah. kind of hiding in the nebula kind of thing for the other yeah they ship. remake the Wrath yeah, of Khan yeah. yeah yeah they did that with yeah, yeah. yeah. so but a lot of it, I think they're trying and hoping it will work. And not, not they're using Star Trek like a freaking toy to, I think, to show them. <laughs> so, so fit because <laughs> Star Trek Grange Hill. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah, come on. The Grange Hill is coming back. Oh, no, it's not Grange Hill that's coming back. It's um the one with Anton Decking that's coming back. Anyway. Oh, what, Biker Grove Man? <laughs> Biker Grove Man is coming back. Come on. <laughs> um, yeah, Adam Chandler, the, the Apple Christmas Carol with Ryan Reynolds and that. That was quite good. I quite like that. Um, I that. I, I, well, I'll watch it. I'll watch a, a musical at Christmas. I'll watch a classic. And that's what I mean. They should have made it a Christmas special. But anyway. Um, so, yeah, that, that's my reasoning. But if it's a good episode, I'll come back and I'll say it's a good episode. But to be honest, my feelings that I wish it had been a, a sci-fi episode and I still don't like musicals, they're still that's still going to be true. Yeah. Um, I, I genuinely... Really try very hard not to say some it's going to be shit. I might say I, I'm not sure about this. I said I wasn't sure about the crossover idea. But what I said was it's going to be brilliant or awful because it's such a risky mm -hmm. idea. Um, right. And I'm just, but I'm so glad it was great. 
I'm, I'm, I'm very open to change my mind as well, which I think a lot of maybe some people aren't so good at, you know, that um, once they get locked into a thinking, they stick to it. And I, I, I pride myself on, I'm more than willing to have an argument with somebody and actually lose. And I don't mind because well, if you can change my mind, I will. I will because I've learned something. I've grown from it, you know. Um, well, I, I think that one thing that we do, do in our respective channels is that we're not hate channels. Um, you know, we are not going to say something's wonderful if it's shite, but we're not going to just say this is terrible, this is awful, everything is. You know, I mean, there's loads of channels out there. We all know we're not going to give out the names, but we know who we're talking about. And they are they some of them prove very very popular for just literally being negative and spewing hate about everything in in whatever uh, TV or film franchise that they focus on. I hate that. Mm. I hate that. Um, so, you know, like I said, oh, it's, it's, um, it's getting get the right balance. Really. Yeah. The easiest way to get 100,000 subscribers is say something controversial. And, um, and you know, do something controversial yeah. that's going to make people angry because they'll they'll subscribe to listen or whatever. But, but you know, I'm, I'm not... Uh, I'm not interested in it. I, I try to have an honest channel. I've Break up a little bit, Mike. Nope. Dim, boom, bim, boom. <laughs> um let's have a quick look uh crossover already teased in lower decks episode so i'm hoping we get it and we did yeah i think so why not um the boys musical episode was great they did it again they did it a different way so that was awesome um recent star trek serves a purpose it makes enterprise look like shakespeare Do you know i was actually thinking about this bob the other day for one thing i was thinking i quite liked the start of enterprise it's been a long road. You know, I, I, I was singing it to myself earlier today and I was thinking, I actually quite liked it. Um, the new Trek does make old Trek look good. You know, it does make, even makes Enterprise look really, really good. It's a shame. No, you, you're not coming through very well, Mike. Um, yeah. And I like some people, yeah, we have to give the animation a fair go because it might be the um the <laughs> dial up. <laughs> um, but it, it might be what we get with SGU. So oh, we've lost him. So I'm pretty sure we'll be back in a second there. Um oh mom, yeah, what to talk about. Hmm. Um, but the thing with new track at the moment, I think the format of 10 episodes ago is a problem because i think it doesn't give us the character development that we're used to from star trek we have lost out on a lot of those episodes that filled out certain characters and things the i keep saying this but it's the the time now for new trek is so valuable they haven't got time to take their time and introduce characters in different ways or see characters in different um scenarios and things it ends up just being they've just got to crack on with it get on with it get on with it and that i do think that's a problem from conception that and then, then there's nothing they can do to get around that because they've got 10 hours that's it instead of 20 before you know uh, over seven seasons the rumor I keep hearing, though, is that Strange New Worlds was only ever planned to be three seasons. And that isn't that that rumor doesn't seem to want to go away. Um, I, I have heard recently that there is serious consideration going towards that there won't be a third season because of the strikes and things. I don't believe that personally. I think they've done too much work on 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 already then because they were already they were they were they were about to start filming when the right to strike happened and they ended up closing the set and um, but they were they were literally about to start filming so they've done a lot of the work already um but if that is right and that we only get three seasons and it was only ever planned for three seasons and i do think all of a sudden a lot of the stuff going on with star trek at the moment makes sense um because they're acting like a show that's been on for six seasons already they're acting like a show that's coming to an end already 
So, yeah. Um, they did, to be fair, they told a lot of story in The Expanse in three seasons. And, and it worked. And there was a lot of story to tell. I was thinking about this with the other um, day, though, actually. Was The Expanse, and this is this is not talking about Star Trek. Now we'll talk about The Expanse for a minute. Was The Expanse too conceptual for the casual observer, for the casual audience? Because you get, when any show, you get a core audience, say a million people. And then you get the casual audience, that audience that comes in and comes out sort of thing. With Star Trek, when you've got episodic shows and things, you you can jump in, you can miss an episode and it's okay. You know, and you can jump in or you can just go, oh, no, I'm not feeling this one or what's the next one sort of thing. You couldn't do that with The Expanse. You had to watch every single episode. You had to take every single episode really seriously. And there were some quite disjointed episodes. I'm thinking the first season, you watch that and then the second season started and it did feel very much like, well, what about all that stuff from the first season? What's going on? Is that is Thomas Jane dead? And, you know, all this sort of thing. And, like, what happened? And then there was a random episode when it's the guy on the rocket ship and it was the the engine that they used was invented. He invented it by mistake. And you just see him shoot off to space because that was a chapter in the book. So they did it. They, did, they, they kept it quite, you know, uh, realistically to the book. But it made casual... The casual watchers, I mean, the, the real sci-fi nutters, us guys, we loved it because it was so realistic and so on the ball and so, you know, um, loyal to the books and things. And it was proper sci-fi, hardcore sci-fi. But the casual observer couldn't watch it. And I think that's why it never really got the audience base it needed. So I'm not going to say The Expanse failed because it didn't. It, it didn't. It, it wasn't a failure. But I'm also going to say that maybe it didn't succeed and maybe it didn't succeed for that reason, that it was too conceptual, it's too heavy. And I do think that's why shows like The Foundation have to go on Apple where they can do TV shows that, you know, were a, a serious um, sci-fi because they don't have the audience base and they will have they need shows like that where they they care about the hardcore fans they're not as bothered about the you know the casual observer casual audience so they want to bring shows like that that people will come to so they are big fans of the foundation novel series so people will come to amazon and sorry and um, apple to watch them specifically to watch them they will get apple just to watch them apple needs shows like that they need shows that are going to drag that audience across Whereas Prime, other big ones, Netflix even, they need shows that cross genres that actually lots of people will watch because these shows are expensive. It's just a thought. I'd love to know what you guys think. Um, I don't think so, but it might have been right next door to conceptual. Yeah, no, conceptual isn't um, the right word, actually. But it was, it was very realistic, very serious sci-fi. And I, I want to say that is... It's grown up sci-fi. I'm struggling to find the right word for it, really. It's it, you know. But the main the main thing I'm trying to talk about is that it you needed to follow each episode. And there'd be stuff talked about in, you know, episode, particularly in like the first season, uh, that then followed through the rest. So if you missed a couple of episodes, you could all of a sudden have something much later that makes absolutely no sense. Um and that's what I'm sort of talking about, that it was really serious, serious sci-fi. Um, I would recommend Apple. Go and get it for like a month. Binge all the brilliant shows. Binge Ted Lasso. Binge Foundation. Binge um, uh, One Small Step. Binge Invasion. Um, binge all these shows. And then cancel it for like six months. And then get it again for, for just for a month. Um, and just binge the new shows that have come on, the new movies and things. There's not enough material on there to keep. So get it. Binge what you want to watch. Turn it off. That would be my way of doing it. Um, but, guys, I think, I think what we're going to do is I think I'm going to end there because we've lost Mike and he's, he's, he's not coming back. So um, And there's only so long I can talk on my own. 
I, I, you know, you, you, I, I hadn't planned for this. So, well, never mind. Um, don't forget to go over and subscribe to M Cubed. We had the live just before this where we were talking to Greg, who is really fascinating. I'm going to try and get him on sidetrack, and we're going to have a uh, Star Trek episode. We're just going to geek out on some of the sci-fi because he, he really was absolutely fascinating. Um, for all mankind, thank you. What did I call it? One small step or something. For all mankind. Um, absolutely fascinating. Um, it, it reminded me of sort of like a Man in the High Castle. It's that sort of thing. But again, very, very cool idea that the Cold War, that the, so, you know, the space race has been won by the Russians. You know. Uh, I believe in you, Jay. Four hour monologue, go. <laughs> I mean, I could, I can talk crap. If you guys throw me some questions, I can, I can answer them. I'll do my best, but just coming up with stuff to stop your head when you weren't expecting it is a little bit more difficult. Um, when are you next live? Um, Go on to M Cube. So there's a link in the description. We're going to add it. I've realized, Harris, I'm sorry, mate. You're not on my um, connected channels, but you will be very shortly. Um, but um, he is. there is a link in the description to go over to M Cubed. So please go over and subscribe. Um, Harris is, 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 you know, he's pushing for 200 subscribers and his channel is better than that. He's live every, almost every night. He's talking about all the movie news. If you love movies, you love television, you have to go and subscribe there because he tells you all every single day. So get over there, subscribe to Cubed. That's where you want your movie news from. And I appear on there sometimes. Matt appears on there sometimes. Stormy goes on there and upsets everybody sometimes. And, you know, we try to help Harris because his, his channel deserves much better than that. And he gives us an hour of his life every single week. Um, I will be live on Sunday. We're going to be talking about the top 10 um, sort of there's a top 10 best sci fi from the noughties list. We're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about the survival guide again and how are we going to get through this bloody um um strike and when they stop when all of a sudden material stops david b right wolf pack i quite liked it i actually think paramount have got some really good shows at the moment i really liked wolf pack don't get me wrong it's old school um uh, actually mike is back we can have him back in Hello. Yeah. I don't know what happened there. I don't know why my background's changed, but um, major catastrophe. <laughs> so sorry about well, that, sir. We've moved on anyway. We're talking about streaming services at the moment. So I was just talking about. I was just going to talk about Paramount. Have you? Have you? Do you watch? Have you got Paramount Plus? Have you seen any shows I, on there? I haven't actually. Um, how do you feel about the whole Paramount uh, situation with their finances? It's not looking too good at the moment, is it? Uh, they've got about a year. If <laughs> one year left, uh, but I tell you what, they've got some really good shows on there. Um, like this, this, this Wolfpack show that had Sam Michelle Geller in it. It's like werewolves and stuff, and it's a bit teenagers. Oh, I'm a werewolf. What are we gonna do? Oh, I fancy mm -hmm. you. Let's have a snog. And it, there's a bit of that, but there's right. there's a few twists and turns. You know, um, you think Michelle 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 Geller is one thing, and then she turns out to be another. There's some quite cool special effects. Um, I'm re I really enjoyed it. I then went on to watch Rabbit Hole with M. Kiefer Sutherland. That's really good. Lots of twists and turns again. And now there's a show called Lioness, um, which again, uh, Zoe Salamander and um, a few other people in it. Oh, it's changed again. Um, yeah, only because it slows down my speech. If, if it's on, it slows down out of sync. That's yeah, that's why I've got rid of the green screen for that. That's why I've just done it. Yeah, yeah. I'm using the green screens for lives because it does affect the, the, the thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, but um, but it's it's really good. Paramount's got some, and obviously Paramount's got some really good movies on there, um, because it's Paramount. So now Paramount Plus is worth getting. It's slowly creeping up. The thing is, it's about the eleventh um, biggest channel now, streaming okay. channel now, and it's growing. It's 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 equal with like Roku and that sort of level at the moment, um, for subscriber numbers. But it's creeping up and creeping up. Um, in twelve months' time, though, do not be shocked if they merge with somebody like Max or Netflix or Apple or something like that. Um, it would get them out of trouble, wouldn't it? And then, of course, it means yeah. then the franchise, with, can they be shared on a, a higher rating streaming network? And then potentially it could be actually a good thing. You know, you've had amalgamations before when you've got a, a, like a channel in trouble. Um, but, of course, um, 
you know, uh, I mean, I, I've not watched it. I, I've watched a bit of Apple TV stuff. I've watched a show called, um, there's a show called something like After Tomorrow or something. And it's, it's a really weird series with these hover cars and these sort of stuff. And that's quite interesting. Something like true. After Tomorrow. That's quite good. Um, but, but going back to Paramount, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, the fact of the matter is there's a lot of competition with all these various um, streaming channels. Um, and even the big ones like Disney and stuff are, are having trouble at the moment. You know, they're cutting their costs. Um, and it's, it's just the fact that people, you know, they don't have too much money to spend and, and mm. they're going to be a little bit more careful. And, you know, it might have been a few years ago. We thought, oh, I'll get this streaming. I'll just get five streaming sites because – Normally, all the shows you like, they're all scattered yeah. all over the place. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. So, and of course, you know, this is why, and I've always said this, I'm a very uh, uh, a big fan of actual physical media. Um, because mm -hmm. in the end, um, it's like, it's like, you know, if I, I've, I've not really watched Star Trek Prodigy that much. I've seen the first couple of episodes. I will watch it, especially after all the live action stuff finishes soon. But it's... The, the problem is, is like it's like someone coming into your home collection and taking all your favorite Blu-rays, DVDs, because, oh, we can't have that anymore. You know, and so it's the home of Star Trek, but it's the the temporary home of Star Trek. It's yeah, kind of like... It's not on Paramount anymore. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> it's going. So what I'm saying is, that's what puts it's me off. To Prime. Um, at the moment, it's behind a paywall on Prime. Um, but I'm told in a couple of months, it'll just be on Prime. And then the second season will be premiering on Prime. Yeah. Um, yeah. As a Prime um, original. Oh, as a Prime, yeah. but they didn't, well, no, yeah, original nothing broadcast, but they didn't make it. It was actually... Yeah, nothing was, to do with it. Yeah. Um, but they've, apparently, they've put some money in to allow Paramount to finish it. Or okay. Paramount to finish it. Um, yeah, there's there's some big, there are some big problems within this. At the end of the day, the streaming wars was lost by everybody. Um, everyone lost. Um, Netflix yeah, even okay. was struggling, and Netflix are generally the ones that, that are doing the, the best. Um, but they've actually secured a little bit by the this new rule with the pass, paramount, uh, password sharing. They've actually done quite well out of that. So their numbers jumped jump by like 2 million subscribers or something. When all of a sudden people thought, oh, crap, I'm going to have to stop um, sharing oh, you know, so this pass, you know, Netflix password. Um, yeah. So they've done okay. They, they just about kept the top spot. Disney are in massive financial problems. Oh, um, that. and that's going to be, that's, that's, that's a big point of that is down to Disney plus, but Disney plus has affected their whole business because when one of the things they did was they've affected cinema because I honestly believe a lot of people and I, cause I've thought it myself. Why am I going to spend all that money to go and watch this new Disney movie when it's only going to, when it's going to be on Disney Plus in a couple of months? In about two, yeah, exactly. You wait a couple of months to save yourself the money. Yeah, and, and and going to the cinema is expensive, so you've got to really want to go. You know, it's um, and I and I I love going to the cinema. I adore it. I Boy, do. I haven't been for a long time, but also right. the fact is that people's home systems now. You get big TVs. You get a good bass. You get a good sound. You know, it's not like back. I go and show my age when I was a kid. I used to have a four by three TV. I'll go and see a movie. And it's huge. It's got the bass. It's got the stereo. And, and you yeah. know, people's home entertainment systems now are a lot better. So yeah. you know, it's, I mean, that, was, that's another factor. When video shops appeared in the in the eighties, you know, that nearly killed cinema. Um, and yeah, it, did, it, it, it came back and you know, and and it, and it bounced back, sort of thing. Um, I don't think it'll ever kill cinema because it'll be a thing, but I think we'll have a lot less cinemas. Um, uh, my cinema they turned into a Lux Stodium, oh, yeah. all the chairs are beautiful for one, they're miles apart. You know, you, you're oh, not, yeah. you're not you know, about someone is eating cinema. crisps. It's yeah. like someone said to me, like, Why do you like go to um cinema and literally have like a huge meal with hot dogs and popcorn yeah. and donuts and like like almost like grazing like a cow in a farmyard or something just, I just shut up and way. watch the bloody film you know what i mean i'm gonna go out on the way and i buy myself a cheap bottle of a cheap bottle of pop and a cheap box bag of popcorn because the popcorn's always stale and the pop's always flat so yeah. i don't bother um, but anyway, so they've got but the chairs all will go back and they've got loads of space and you're there comfortable as hell. I, I we went to watch, I can't remember what it was now, but we went to watch a film that my kids wanted to watch and my wife had to poke me because I'd fallen asleep. I was snoring. <laughs> um, it wasn't, so the, good, it wasn't the Barbie early. film, was it? <laughs> no, it wasn't. No. 
Um, that's a film that's confusing parents. Isn't it? What the hell is that all about? Everywhere I go in Portsmouth, where I live, there are signs for this thing everywhere. Yeah. I don't want to see it. I, want, I don't want to see Oppenheimer, but I don't want to see it. It's like, oh my God. Most advertised yeah. movie I've seen in years. It's every single bus stop, every single billboard. There's this woman dressed up as a Barbie doll. Like, no, thank you. I don't want to see it. <laughs> Um, but apparently, I, I, I was, we were talking about this on the stream a minute ago. But um, one of the things was because it's quite a grown-up movie. It's not. It's you know, it's it's about matriarchy versus patriarchy and all this stuff. There, there are some very serious themes going on in this movie. But all little five-year-old girls want to go watch it. <laughs> I'm actually talking to my one of my bosses actually for my day job the other day, right. and she took it. The, I took him yesterday, and she came out going, "I I don't know what I've just seen. What I um I, you know I was expecting a kids' film, and I'm like." And my kids coming out with a lot of questions, and really, answer, okay, you okay. know, and it's, it's a very confusing movie, but hey, it's done very, very well. So oh, I, I've no idea. I, uh, I, I, if people think it's quite, if it's well done, I don't know. I mean, like I said, yeah. it's, it's uh, not something I take fancy seeing. It's part of the experience. I mean, I, I always come out and then for hours later, I'm going, oh, a bit of popcorn. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like a sort of like an after thing, isn't it? Kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my but I I have to admit I think twice about taking my kids to the cinema because it's like by the time they've sat and then they go bitch and they want nachos, oh, nachos, oh, nachos. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but they then don't, don't eat half of because they you know they and they cost a bomb. They're really expensive. Well, well. I'm like I've spent hundred quid. How the hell have I spent hundred quid to go to the cinema? Um, but me and my wife have got the um, the cards where you get to you know unlimited. Oh, okay. That's, that's, yeah, that makes sense. That's good. So we go yeah. all the time, all the time. Um, so I, you know, I love it. Um, so, so yeah, but, um, I actually think Apple is one of the best ones at the moment, particularly if you're a sci-fi fan. I think they've got all the best sci-fi episode things at the moment. Foundation, and, uh, uh, Foundation's very good. Foundation set season two is is That's just coming up good. soon, isn't it? That's it, coming up it's soon. Already yeah. come out. It came out. They were on the second episode, I think, or third. Oh, episode. Well, I'll have to watch that. Okay, I'll have to but, watch that. Um, yeah, I'll have to watch that. But, but yeah, I just think I think the future is going to be that the the streaming services they're going to have to. Well, I think they thought it was going to take over the networks and networks were going to die, and now it actually seems that I think the networks are making a resurgence. Why? Advertised TV is still doing okay. It's terrible. Um, I mean, live TV is it's terrible. I don't watch one thing. People still watch it. Um, but the thing is, the networks will still do twenty six episode seasons. That the oh the yeah, so, yeah, I can see, yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose. Um, but not much in the way sci fi though, especially in the UK. I can't think of one apart from Doctor Who. There's not one British sci fi network series I can think of. No, and I have to think. I don't watch. Anything on TV? I watch I every of streaming services. I do too. We we'll watch some stuff on catch up. We will watch stuff. stuff yeah, on yeah, catch up. yeah, yeah. But generally speaking, we watch everything through streaming. And um, and I've got, but because of this channel though, I sort of the wife will sort of say, "Well, we've got too many. It costs too much money." And I'm like, oh, "No, the channel pays for it, babe. I need to watch these TV shows." And so it is terrible that I'm there going, "It's I. I don't want to watch it. It's research," and I get away <laughs> with that somehow. Um, but I've got, um, I've obviously got Prime, I've got Netflix, we got Prime, yeah, we got Netflix, got Paramount, I've got Apple. You just got two. You got a load though. You got a whole lot by the sounds of it. Most um, of it. I'm trying to think what else. I, I think that's all of them. I've got, I've got Paramount. So I've got five. Um, I think that's all the ones that are pretty much available in this country. Other than if you want to get add-ons through, yeah, we've got Disney though. Have you? Have you got Disney? Oh, and we've got Disney. So I've got, got seven. As well. Okay, that's a lot. Um, oh, wow. Okay. I don't watch as much Disney as I used to. I've sort of. I, I, watch, think the, I watch the Star Wars stuff. That. That's that's the only stuff I'd watch. Is the yeah. Star Wars stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't watch YouTube. YouTube's for children. Joking. <laughs> Joking. Um, I keep saying that on my channel. My my kids all they watch is YouTube. They don't watch anything else. My my two watch a lot of um what's the not the other one what's the um TikTok yeah they watch a lot of TikTok as That's well terrible. and I don't get that no I don't um, know what that's all about at all I uh, we've got a TikTok channel and Matthew does the videos for TikTok oh, uh, all right when he remembers okay <laughs> and um he, uh, yeah he he's, he's just better at that than I am I can't do shorts he's he's really no, good at it no, I wish no. he did more of them because he's he's really really good at it um. And um, it's. I think you need a specific style for it, and I don't. 
It doesn't, doesn't matter. I'm too old for TikTok. I'm sorry. I'm, that's but, why it's way past my dynamic. But yeah, I've never, never. Um, All I see is like TikTok. Someone's like going, ooh. That's it. It's like five seconds. I just don't understand well, why hit TikTok. Hit a brick is. and fall over. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or, or like I poke myself in the eye and then like it repeats. Oh. It's like, you know, it's like, mean, it's like the IQ doing... goldfish or something. You know, it might be right. Yeah, there yeah. are people out there doing a really good TikTok shorts and, and YouTube short videos as well. Um, there are some great ones. It's just you've got to sift through a lot of crap to find them. But, um, yeah, it's thing. Well, it is an interesting point that Trekgate has just come up with. I'm going to have to go. So I promised the wife I'd be done at nine. So, sorry, yeah, to... sorry. That's my bad. Um, no, it was me waffling while you were gone. Um, so I understand why some people don't call Enterprise Classic Trek, but for me it is. It is for me as well it, because mm -hmm. it's first gen, second gen Star Trek. Um, none of the new Trek shows have come that close to how great even that show was. Picard season three and Strange News are closer, but not that close. I think Picard season three is the only new Star Trek series that I would say comes close to that second generation of Star Trek. I agree entirely. 100%. That I was actually getting up early on a Thursday when it came out over here to watch it, and I was excited to watch each episode. I, I'm i not excited to watch Strange New Worlds. I, I you know, I, I watch it, and I look forward to watching it. Don't get me wrong. It's not the same you know, level, is it? It's not quite I'm not the same. Up early. It's down a, a, down a notch, isn't it? Yeah, I'll watch it when I get in, you know, from work. I won't get up early to watch it, which I was with Picard Season 3. But I tell you what, I'm honestly, I watched Picard season three back through again. It wasn't as good. I didn't enjoy it as much. Once the nostalgia and everything had gone, and I knew what was coming a little bit, but um, actually I did speak to somebody about this, and they said, I think you watched it too soon. You needed to to let it, you know, like a fine assimilate wine. Assimilate it, assimilate the, the actual whole thing and what it was about. Yeah, maybe I watched it a bit too quickly, but um, all the mistakes in it just compounded me i just thought like it's mistake after mistake i've seen it i've seen it twice i, I will give it another rewatch um yeah. it's it's weird with certain shows that um i watched them the first time and i'm disappointed and then i watch it the second time it's not so bad mm. um and um like i said it's kind of like it's um it's rare for me to be the other way around where i've watched something i've enjoyed it and then i've liked it less in the second viewing yeah. so i don't know whether that's the um i don't know I know, it's not quite sure, really, but... Um, I, 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 I have this question for you. At the end what? of Season 4, Enterprise, after the Zindi conflict, mm, if they had done the NX-01 refit then... Oh, no, Season 3. End of Season 3. Season 3 was Zindi. Season 4 was after the Zindi. Yeah. So if they'd have done... the Because obviously they the Enterprise came back from the battle with the Zindi, battered. Mm. If they'd have done the refit then... Would we have got a fifth season of Star Trek Enterprise? Uh, well, I know that the refit was potentially going to be happening in season five. Um, yep. And it's going to be the Romulan War, the beginning of the Romulan yep. War. I know that. Um, are you saying that if we'd have seen the refit at the beginning of season four, the last season, it might have actually built up popular interest in the show? I think it would have been more interesting. I think it would have built up. There'd have been a bit of excitement around the show. Whereas there's always a bit of a wane, you know, mid mid. Thing. Season four is ten. Season four was the best higher. season. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I agree. Thought. Um, but there's always a popularity thing, and then they tend to pick up again towards the end. If you think, even like classic shows like Friends and stuff, around season four or five, it became you know popularity waned a little bit, and then it picks up again towards the end. Um, it does happen with some seasons shows. do that. Um, so mm -hmm. I think if they'd have done if they'd have done the refit and got a bit of excitement through, I think we'd have got. I think we'd have got a season five. I think we. I I loved Enterprise. I thought Enterprise was so good. I still think Scott B Bakula. I still was too used to him being um, on Quantum Leap, but I, I liked it. I, I thought it was a good solid it series. I, I, one of my, I really one of my do. And I, I was on board. And I just think that you know it really was when it finished in two thousand and five and it actually got cancelled. Um, it started. It was never quite the same after that. You know, and um, it's still like I said, um, the car season three was the closest we've got since that era. And even if yeah. nothing else happens, we got that, and I'm very, very pleased we've got it. And I, yeah. like I said, I think in subsequent rewatches, I think I'll still like it quite a similar level to as I watched it the first or second time. But yeah. I never know, might be like you. <laughs> like I, said, I think it's Star Trek 2.0. Like I said, actually, it should be 3.0 technically, shouldn't it? Because we're on the third gen of Star Trek. Yeah, this, we're in the third. We're in the third era. 
third oh, era, yeah, so it should be three moment. really. But yeah, that's how I'm starting to think about it now. And I'm just I just don't think about it. it's not really Trek. I think about it the way I think about JJ Abrams Star Trek. That I actually oh, quite that's like a very it. that's a very polarizing uh, yeah. element of Star Trek, as it always has been since yeah. 2000. Well, New Trek is as well. Um, yeah, but yeah. If you well, don't well, think of it as really Star Trek. If you think of it as just JJ Star Trek, it's not quite as annoying, and you can just enjoy it for what it is. Um, Len flares and all, um, but I'm, that's how I'm going to think about Star Trek now. Well, look, I know you need to wrap up, so let me just quickly say I've enjoyed. Yep. Um, we were reviewing, but we haven't got time. I know you got to shoot off, but I have mm. enjoyed um, because um, Picard shows me well season two so far. Um, let's see what the musical episode is like. And then hopefully we'll get a good season finale. Fingers crossed. Um, so it's asking that I will be putting a video out tomorrow um, to give you a little bit of a sneak peek. It's something I've talked about a few times, okay. and it's the Stargate Universe animated movie. Um, What's this? I've not heard anything about this. Well, I came up with the idea. I'm not, I'm not going to go into the details now because okay, I'm going right, to watch the video tomorrow. But sure. for you guys that have actually bothered coming to watch us live. And it will be on the Patreon uh, first thing in the morning, as always. I came up with an idea that they should do a Stargate Universe um, animated movie. Because I thought it's the only way it would actually get made, because it's a lot cheaper to make than live action. Um, and we heard lots of rumours that sort of were making me think that maybe that was actually a possibility. Um, like Warner Brothers, like a couple of the actors being approached, and but us not knowing what for, blah, blah, blah. Okay. One of my sources, and I'm not going to go into the thing, but one of my sources then messaged me after I talked about it on a live going, and all they said was, how did you know that? Oh. And that then started a little bit of a conversation that is talking about tomorrow's video. Now, it is very much rumour, and I say that repeatedly in the video. I had to, I've even undenied about whether I should even release this information because I'm not confident about it. But I think That's I will you. leave the possibility... I talk about it just as a possibility and I explain why I think it actually could make sense and why actually th th this is not only the thing is that it's not just a plan. It might have actually already been made. And that's oh, bit, wow. Okay. okay. That's the bit that I'm sort of like going eh. or, or in the process of being made, I should say that the, uh it's it's still be made now but there's a reason why they've changed that basically amazon have changed a lot of their plans and the strikes have maybe accelerated this okay um but it's only coming from one source i don't know how they got the information i don't know where the information has come from so i cannot say it's any more than a rumor sounds interesting then but it's an interesting rumor so we will talk about it um okay. And yeah, that video will be out tomorrow. Okay, right. I'll check it out. Definitely, absolutely. Um, and I am going to get yelled at by people going, "You're making this up," but I'm like, I can't. I, I. No, That's partly I, my fault. I had a problem with my end, so I'm sorry about that. No, no, no. And I talked to no. I mean, people when I release this video, people are going to yell at me. Oh, I think you meant rushing off at the moment. <laughs> no, no, no. And Harris is. I talked about Harris with Harris a few days ago about this, and all of a sudden, I'm not sure I should do the video or not. I don't know if I should do it. Um, and we just decided. Um, You're going to do it. You're going to go for it. Trekkay says, I hated my idea of a Wormhole Extreme animated. It would have been a comedy series. I hate that idea. You're just wrong. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> no, it's, I, I thought it was just a nice way of doing like a comedy sort of series. Because I really, I'm a big fan of Lower Decks. I think it's great. I think it really adds something to the franchise. Yeah. I don't like that it's in universe particularly. So I was just thinking, look, it's a great way of doing sort of that type of show because it's a show I love. And if you hate Lower Decks, you're going to hate this idea, obviously. Um, but it's out of universe. So it's still Stargate, but it's not in universe. So you can, I just thought it opened a lot of possibilities to sort of take the mick out of Stargate and have a joke with Stargate. Right. Without it being Stargate. Without actually being, a, yeah, the way around it, yeah. Yeah, that's but, fair enough. So it was yeah. a fun way. I and mean, this would only, this would be years down the line if everything else worked. And it was, but, you know, this would, this would be like, We've already had two or three seasons, maybe a couple of movies. This would be way down the line. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't do this straight away, sort of thing. But I just thought it'd be fun, or a yeah. comic book series or something. You wouldn't even have to do an animated movie, really. A comic book series, yeah, just something which is actually get something actually out there in whatever form 
yeah. works. Slightly just to see exactly what happens. So. Yeah, slightly yeah. different dimension, a different, you know, different bit of fun. And something, but something you can have fun with. And the creators, and you, you can tell the creators though, canon doesn't matter. Just have fun. Yeah. Have fun with it. And okay. I think we could see something really interesting. But so um check out, um yeah, you you you're you're wrong. So <laughs> No, Don't no. lose him as a subscriber. <laughs> no, no, no. He's obviously not. I mean, it's it, it, this is all opinion, and to be honest, it would all be about execution as well. If they did an ex a wormhole extreme series as well as it could be done, and it was respectful to the original series and everything, and you watched it with an open mind, you'd probably love it. But it's like everything else. If they do it badly, it'll be awful. Um, and it's all about execution. Look, look. There's a series a couple of years ago. You know, like Satan fighting crimes. I can't remember what it was mm -hmm. called. Right? What was it called? Lucifer. Stupid oh, yeah. I never movie. saw it. I never saw it, but yeah, I know of it. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, it's the stupidest, you know, idea. Satan goes on holiday to Earth and starts fighting crime. It's ridiculous. But it was executed so well, mm -hmm. it was worked. Look, the Star Trek episode yesterday, the crossover between a cartoon and, and live action. Yes, that works. Stupid idea. But they... Yeah executed it brilliantly it and at the end of the day any of these ideas if they're a risk if it's done well you'll love it if it's not uh, done, does, does that go with the musical before we sign off <laughs> well, unfortunately probably not so i'm just staring i like staring go on no no but only because i don't like musical <laughs> i don't like them either um, I but I'll tell you what, I, I like some. I, I much prefer the musical original um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I, oh, I that's, that's much better. That's Gene, Gene Wilder. Uh, Gene Wilder's great yeah. in that. That's uh, yeah. Actually, I don't, um, do you know what? I've actually got a copy of that. I don't even think of it as a musical because it's just such a good film. It's you just know, it's, it's, it's perfect. Um, yeah. And, yeah. And so, hey, you never know. If they're really catchy songs. Star Trek across the universe, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But I will only be watching it once. I would be amazed if I ever watched it again. But well, I look forward to getting your review of it or like your opinion when it comes out. So it's only I would be surprised if I even can watch all of it. <laughs> if oh not, come on! If I you get be that tough on it, I'd be surprised. Okay. Well, you can watch it with the sound off. And... <laughs> Mine. They're trapped in a wall. They're trapped behind a glass. Door. Oh, they're in the wind. They're in the wind. No, I, I can't. Um, but I will, I'm going to go into it with an open mind, and I'm genuinely not going to carry anything. I'm not going to go. Look, I will give this a go. Um, and if it's if it's bad, I'll tell you it's bad, and if it's great, I'll tell you it's great. Um, I look forward to hearing it. I look forward to getting your your opinion, whatever yeah. it is. You know, well, fingers, fingers crossed it'll be good. I'm just, I'm not looking forward to it, but I don't. I just I just wish I'll probably still come out of it, like I said, and just wish it was a sci-fi show. How how am I here? Oh, go on. How am I here and there? How's this working? It was a very big surprise to me. How many people like that? Yeah. Yeah, but just as many people hate it. But it's, um, you know, uh, it's a polarizing idea. It's a risky idea. Tell you what you should do. You should review it. You should actually film yourself and actually do one of those things where you can actually, you know, you could put the actual... Uh, episode without the sound on and put a time on it yeah. and watch the whole episode and obviously I know it's a bit dodgy putting it on YouTube with the copyright and stuff but it'd be great to right. get your reaction of it that'd be fun I, I, I sometimes will do a video when I'm watching so I'll stop and or sometimes you can hear it in the background and I'll sort of like go what the if might be, I'd happens, love to see that I'd love to see that first I do that'd those videos occasionally uh, maybe I'll do that okay. and just yeah. get an instant reaction sort of thing and uh, and uh, and I'll be there going, it's a long road. That's a proper song. <laughs> Getting from there to here. Yeah. And then as soon as they start doing start, or, or I don't know they're going to do Bohemian Rhapsody. And if they actually, if the lyric is subspace Rhapsody, very, what very right thing, in, I'm going to kill I'll tell you what, I'm going to idea. What if they put in the Enterprise theme song into the actual musical? I'd probably, I'd love that. <laughs> I just had an idea. Now, I would like that, and a lot of fans would like that. So I reckon yep. that's something I'd like to. I suddenly had this idea. Much as they done that, like um, Pike singing, it's been yeah. a long. I'm not going to sing because I can't sing, but that would be interesting. Yeah. I would like that. From there to here. Yeah. I, actually, yeah. I hated that when they did that, but that's one of those things is that you look back now and I'm like, I love it's that. all right. It's different. I really liked it. I thought it was great. Yeah. Um, I like the, the updated version of season three is where they gave it a bit yeah, more yeah. to it. It grew on me. It yeah. grew on me. That did. Anyway. 
Thank you so much, Mike, for thank um, you. I'll be on as usual. Um, technical issues as, as usual. Sorry, I apologize. <laughs> if, it's, if it's not you, it's me. So I wouldn't really, I really wouldn't worry about it. Um, and hey, I, I kept it together like the professional that I am. Oh, I do the same on my channel. I'm just like constantly professional, you know. I just, yeah, I just said, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Please, somebody say something in the comments I could talk about. Um, At least but, I came back. I was like, I was completely stuffed. I had to yeah. reset my router and everything. It was really bad. Yeah, exactly. Sorry. Um, <laughs> thank you so much, guys. Everybody's thank in the you. comments again. Thank you. Don't forget to go over and subscribe to M Cubed. There is a link in the description. I'm going to be banging on about this because his channel deserves to have a lot more people on. And if you like movies and television and you want to be kept informed, but can't be asked to read Deadline every day, Harris's channel is the place to go. So get over there and subscribe. And mine too. And mine too. Don't subscribe to Mike Sawyer and Mike Podcast. <laughs> it's shit. <laughs> get over there, subscribe to all these things. Um, I have not got a link in the description for your channel, sir, but I will put one in in five Thanks. minutes. Thanks. So you'll, there Thank will you be one there when you're there. M Cubed is awesome. And so is Mike's Solo One podcast, particularly if you like British old classic TV shows because you put those little clips on things. I love watching those. I know you keep getting trouble with them um, copyright because of putting those oh, on. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not there for the money. I'm just there to share stuff that I enjoy. But shit I know you like. That's what these channels are supposed to be there for. I'm going yeah, to exactly. get in serious trouble one of these days for saying something, that, but I, it'll be, I will mean it whenever I say it. But I'm going to, it's only a matter of time. Um, thanks, guys. We'll see you soon. And uh, Mike will see you in a, in maybe in a month or so when we'll talk about. Yeah. Whatever next. Yeah. I'll, I'll definitely come back. It'll be great. Thank you very much. See you later.